Hey everybody, it's Julie. Welcome back to my channel. Haven't done a video in a while, but I do have a trifecta for you today. Um, I'm going to be sharing three different ideas for the Mondo Tulip stamp set, which released right here in April over at EllenHudson.com. And it's always nice to have a variety of ideas for a stamp set to get the most bang for your buck, right? So I'm going to start with the first one by taking some Canson XL 140 pound watercolor paper. This is my go-to watercolor paper. And I like to stamp on the smoother side. It's got a, a lumpier textured side and then the smoother side. And I always cut my pads down to quarter sheet size. So four and a quarter by five and a half so that they're ready to go. And I inked up with a Versamark ink. I'm using a regular a grind of white embossing powder, nice bright white. And then I did preheat my heat gun for about 30 seconds. I also pre-prepped this watercolor panel with an anti-static pouch so that the embossing powder would only stick to where the Versamark got stamped. And then I'm gonna anchor this down to my clipboard and Teflon sheet here. Mostly that's just because I know it will pop off when I'm ready for it, but it will also anchor it down nice and flat. Now you could use removable tape if you want, but I'm finding that this works really great. So I'm sticking with it. And I'm gonna create my uh, color palette here by taking some Catherine Pooler water-based dye inks and just pressing those against my uh, waffle flower uh, media mat here. And then I'm gonna use a Pentel Aquash. This is a water brush that has, uh, it comes in different sizes. Um, this one is the smaller one and it has, uh, you can just unscrew the cap or the brush nib and uh, fill it with water and then screw that back on. And I like it when I'm working uh, this way because then I don't have to worry about grabbing a jar of water and knocking it over, which I have done in the past. <laughs> so this is better, it's safer for me. So I actually brushed clean water over the flower and I left some dry space there. And I like to do that because I only want the color to kind of flow wherever the water is. And I love this kind of, it's very um, imperfect, well, imperfect watercolor effect. And I like that look, but you do have to be a little bit patient and let the water do its thing and don't overwork it, don't overthink it too much. So a little bit of water, leave a little bit of dry space, drop some color from your palette there and just tap, tap, tap the brush into those puddles of, of water to transfer um, your color. Now, if you need to, you can go back and dilute with some clean water. You can dab up any excess with a clean uh, paper towel. And if you're not satisfied with what you've got, you know, let it dry and then come back and add more water and drop in more color. So I try to let my layers kind of dry a bit. I'll move on to another flower before I come back and review um, what I've already done and decide if I want to mess around with it anymore. And sometimes I'll let the whole thing dry completely and then I'll come back maybe an hour later and go, yeah, I'm not satisfied with that. I wanna add some more. This is great, a great way to approach it because it's so much easier to just add more if it's not dark or intense enough. And the thing you have to remember with watercolor work is it usually dries less intense than when you put the color down. So don't uh, be afraid to come back later and rework it a little bit more because it is water-based. It will still dissolve with water, right? You can still dilute it. So I'm just going to go on my merry way here, finishing up on the last flower, and then I'll also get the stems done using the same method with clean water and dropping some color in by just tapping it and letting the water do its thing.
once you get to this point, the hardest thing to do is to leave it alone, let it be, and um, just set it aside to dry nice and flat. You can try heating it, uh, speeding it up with your heat gun, but you do have to be careful that you're not remelting all your embossing lines. So you don't want to get that close. Um, so I'm just going to be patient, leave it alone. <laughs> And when I come back, I'm actually going to die cut it. Now I've got one I've already finished on a card here. And after I die cut it out, um, I also die cut a couple of those four bar rectangles. Actually, just one of them that I felt would make a great backdrop for the flowers. And then I, stamp, I loaded the whole thing into the misty and uh, stamped the greeting right there along that edge. And I thought that finished off that card beautifully. So for the next idea, I'm going to create my own striped background with the, a particular palette. So I've grabbed a quarter sheet of Nina Solar White. This is 80 pound and I've got a distress. I think this is sponge sugar distress ink and I have a two inch rubber brayer and I'm going to load up with ink and then I'm going to start off on the uh, scratch paper first and then roll right across and you want to roll and lift roll and lift when you're loading the ink and also when you're applying the color and when I switch colors I don't want to cross contaminate my ink pads so I have a jar of water sitting there with a washcloth to help catch <laughs> the water I tend to splash around and I just drop the brayer into the jar of water and swish it around a little bit. And then I have a hand towel there where I can dry the brayer off completely before I move on to the next color. Now I'm letting these colors overlap. I think it's kind of cool um, because you're going to end up with multiple colors from what you started with because you're allowing them to overlap. And if you need more intensity, you can come back and add more. But I just went ahead until I got these stripes of color running across and I don't care that they're imperfect. I really like this distressed look and I'm just gonna pretty much um, leave it alone and not worry about them being all smooth and the fact that there are very uh, definitive transition lines between the colors. I like the look. So now I'm gonna set that aside and I've already heat embossed or gold embossed these tulips onto another quarter sheet of white cardstock and then I'm gonna use a straight blade trimmer to just come down from the top edge here. You notice I flipped that panel upside down. And then I'm gonna stop short once I get there. And this is probably about half an inch. I just kind of eyeball it, what looks good to me. <laughs> and so I'm gonna lift the blade up and then continue on the other side of that blossom and trim that off, you know, all the way down the rest of the panel. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and come in here and do a little bit of fussy cutting. Nothing that's too painful or time consuming. Although I actually find fussy cutting kind of relaxing. I know that's weird and some people don't like to do that, but um, I actually don't mind fussy cutting. <laughs> so once you've got that trimmed out nice, you can see the edge is popping out there. Um, I'm going to come back to the panel that I made my stripes on and I'm going to slice off about three quarters of an inch and I'm going to save the, the rest of it for other projects. But here I mounted it to another Nina Solar White um, A2 card and then popped up my tulips and added a sentiment and a little bit of Nouveau drops. That was super quick and it, it's got some bold color but I didn't have to spend the time coloring the tulips. Now another idea is one that uses up some scraps and we all have a ton of scraps, right? So I'm going to do some color blocking and I'm working with this really pretty pale pink and kind of a blush pink color and I've got another one that's kind of uh, kind of a sugary pink. It kind of matches that sponge sugar color in tone and then I have some orange and I'll have the names of the colors I used um, listed down below. But basically, I'm going to trim these to create some uh, strips of color. I just wanted three colors. And I'm going to attach those to a quarter sheet of typing paper. And you want to make sure that your edges are really nice and straight. And I noticed that that one edge was not bumping up. So I went ahead and peeled it away. And I'm going to re-stick it back down there. And then I've got this big orange piece, which is going to go at the top. So you just want to make sure where you're joining these, try to have adhesive that keeps them nailed down to that uh, typing paper because that's what's holding all of this 
together. You could use a, a piece, a quarter sheet of cardstock, but I just use typing paper because it's not going to be seen anyway, and it keeps the bulk to a minimum. So now I'm just going to clean everything up, trim it down flush there along that edge so I have a nice straight edge, and then flip it around and make sure I've got the other edge nice and trimmed. And one of the great reasons uh, for using typing paper for this is if you have to trim through multiple layers of cardstock, it will kind of throw the tightness of that blade on the tonic trimmer off. I made the mistake of cutting through multiple layers of cardstock with it once before, and now I have to tighten it all the time with a little Allen wrench, and I hate having to do that. So just a word to the wise, if you don't like ruining the tension there on your guillotine blade, um, make sure you're not cutting through more than one layer of cardstock at a time. And Pretty much a piece of typing paper plus cardstock is about the limit that that thing can take. So now that I've got all that mounted together, I went ahead and stamped the tulip with Versamark again. And I'm again using just a standard white embossing powder. I'm going to heat it. Now you'll notice that those are going to buckle up a little bit because the heat will cause the, the tape runner to kind of loosen up. So I'm just gonna press it firmly in place here. I did coat the entire um, front of my card, and this is actually a four inch by five and a half inch uh, base card. So I made it a little bit skinnier, and then I coated the entire front of that with tape runner so that my uh, panel, my color block panel would be mounted there flush and tight and it won't be uh, lifting up in any way. So then I can go ahead and trim off any overhanging excess. And remember what I said, you don't wanna be cutting through multiple layers of cardstock with that trimmer. And once I have that in place, I'm just gonna go ahead and burnish it down nicely, make sure it's all nice and flat and everything is stuck down well. And then I can go ahead and stamp my greeting. So I just grabbed, uh, hey friend, I'm gonna start with friend and go ahead and use just a darker color. This one is uh, Moroccan Spice, I think, if I remember correctly. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna double stamp it because I wanted to increase the intensity there on that orange. And then I cleaned that off and grabbed the little hay. And the reason I did that is because I wanted this to overhang over the top. I like it when the loops of a cursive kind of overhang a sans. Uh, font and I think it looks really nice so I'm just gonna go ahead and double ink and stamp that too and then that card is done after you add some droplets of Nouveau that nice white um, to create those little faux enamel drops and there you got uh, three different cards with the Mondo Tulip and good for you you made it all the way to the end whole sheet of gold stars thanks for watching <laughs>